All right, good day. Today we're looking at linear transformations of graphs. Um, here you see the x squared graph. <coughs> it's one of your primary functions. And what we want to investigate today is what will happen if we make certain basic changes to this function or any of the other basic functions. So for instance, I have this graph right here, x squared. I was plug a number in, say 5, I would go 5 squared, 25, and so I have the coordinates 5, 25, which is way off the screen, but that's alright. Anyway, so if I go to this function right here, and I add 1 to this function, what we see happening is that the function right here, which is now at 0, 0, will go to the coordinates of 0, 1. The plus 1 right here had the effect of raising the graph by 1 unit. I would make it 2. The graph would go up. If I would make it to three, the graph would go up. So we see this number out here, right here, affects how the graph is moving. We see a vertical direction up and down. So we call this right here a vertical transformation. If I want to make it negative one, you can see right here the graph is going down. Negative two. You would expect the graph to go to negative two. Notice that the graph retains its same basic shape, it's just its position is changing. And in fact, the position is changing in a specific way. This number on the outside is causing the graph to move up or down. We call that a vertical tra um, linear transformation, moving the graph either up or down. Now on the other hand, if I want to move the graph left or right, I get a little more fancy. First and foremost, I would need parentheses. And then I can affect the x first. That will cause the graph to move left to right. So if I go x plus 1, we expect the graph to go to the right or to the left. So well, actually, let's return to center first. And then go ahead and oh man I forgot if I go ahead go x plus one you will see that the graph moves one unit to the left so one of the interesting about the Horizontal transformations, the transformations along the x-axis, notice I am changing the x values right here, is that they do the opposite of what you would expect. If I made this plus 2, the graph will shift over 2 units. If I was to make this plus 3, the graph will shift to the left 3 units, you know. To the left, to the left. To get the graph to go the other way, I have to do x minus one that will shift the graph to the right so forth and so on so if i want to get all the way over to nine i'll go x minus nine and that will get the graph all the way over to nine so in recap the number on the inside of the function cause controls the horizontal movement of the graph either to the left or to the right on the other hand the number on the outside let's make this plus three right here controls the movement of the graph up and down the graph originally started at 0, 0, but now we've moved the 9 units to the left and 3 units up. And we can see these very easily from these two numbers right here. The interesting thing is that this holds for all functions. If I were to use a totally different function, say square root of x, square root of x looks like this right here. And if I was to go outside the function, plus 1, notice the plus 1 is not underneath the radical sign, the graph will move up 1 unit. If, I were, if on the other hand I was to go inside the parentheses and go minus 3, the graph will go to the right 3 units. Right here, as you can see it was here and it shifted over right here. It didn't matter what function you have. These two numbers right here govern the position of what you would call the center of the graph and then all the remaining points. For instance, this point right here is at 4, 2. 
if I was to remove the three, that point would move back three units, and now it would be at zero. This point right here would now be at one, comma two. And that's very important to grasp. But what it is right for us is a shortcut in helping us to graph a function. If we have memorized, if we have memorized the graph of square root of x, for example, I can easily graph this function right here plus two minus four without actually having to having to rework the entire problem. I can figure out what the graph should look like and thus be able to tell where it would be. So plus two would mean I would move over two units, and negative four means I would go over negative four. And so the graph will jump to this point right here, and then it will curve out in this direction, just like this graph. So negative two, four, and then you hit enter. And of course, we were right. So let's head back to our original graph, the uh, x squared. What other kind of transformations can we see? Well, if I were to make the number in front of the entire function negative, it will cause the graph to turn upside down. It will flip the graph over the x-axis. A vertical transformation, just think about it for a second. Again, if I go back and I make this x cubed, again, the, um, it kind of looks like an S to me, if you turn your head on the side anyways. Again, I put a minus sign in front of my x cubed graph. The graph is now upside down. Of course, the negative over negative is a positive, and I have my graph one more time. So, if I go a negative x cubed, and then I add 3 on the outside, which would mean up, go up 3, I would have the upside down graph. Notice it's upside down now, but now it's 3 units higher. So again, the same principles are holding. So if I come inside and I parentheses, and then inside right here, I go minus two. That is two units to the right. The graph shifted over two units to the right. So the graph is upside down because of the minus sign. The minus two means the graph shifted over from zero, zero, two times. And the plus three means the graph shifted up one, two, three. Okay. So to make a sketch of this graph, not an exact replica, but a sketch of this graph right here, those are the three principles you'll need. You need to know where the center is from these two points right here, which you can call H and K. And then you would need to know the graph is upside down, right side up. The minus sign right here means it's upside down. And then the x cubed tells us it's an s graph, so you draw the s graph upside down, and that gives us the graph of our function. Again, this holds for all of our basic graphs. Um, the absolute value graph right here is a v, nice strong v right here, going through 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 3, 3, and so forth and so on. Now, if I wanted this graph to be upside down, and I wanted the graph to be at negative 4, positive 2, that would mean I would minus sign to make it upside down. I would need to have a plus 4 to move it 4 units to the, to move it 4 units to the right. And then I would need a plus 2 to shift the graph up 2 units. And then you hold it. Then you have the, the um, there you have it. You have your coordinates of your graph. So keep these principles in mind, and this will make this section much easier. Oh, let's show you um, one more of the other graphs. An interesting one, I think, is the x graph. The x graph is a straight line, horizontal, one, one, two, two, three, four, f of x equals x. And if you think about this graph, you know that the y-intercept is 0, right? If I go plus 0, y-intercept is 0, you get the same graph. And the slope is 1. So you go 1 over, up, 1 over. So that's a graph that we, we're very accustomed to using. So if I go plus 3, 
This means that the graph is going three units up, correct? The y-intercept is now three. And if you think about it for a second, if I hit enter, look at that. The graph moves up plus three. Now, if I wanted to move the graph over to this point right here, this actually is really interesting, parentheses, and then you'd have to go inside the parentheses, minus three right here, I mean, you go to minus three right here, the graph shifts over three units. Aha, but notice it's the same thing as just shifting it down three. That would make this graph, I guess, a little bit of fun for me. I don't know. Hopefully you guys have fun out there as well. Now, the last thing you need to look at is what happens if I multiply by a constant. So let's say I have two times x raised to the second power. I would get the x squared graph, but the graph right here will grow at a faster rate. Consider the original f graph. g of x equals x squared. Right here. Notice the difference between the two graphs. The g of x is in purple. That's the original graph right here. And the two in front, the graph right here, is making the graph grow faster. So right here, 1 comma 1, if I multiply by 2, I get to 2 right here. It's doubling the graph. If I were to make this right here a 3, right here. So notice, instead of the original graph being at 1, 1, it is now 1 comma 3. This is called a horizontal stretch because it's making all the y values triple on the graph. Horizontal stretch making all the y values triple on the graph. And so the graph grows at a faster rate. Now, if I were to use a fraction, say one half right here, the graph will grow at a slower rate. So at the coordinates right here, negative one, one, the y value down here will now be negative, negative one comma one half. The graph right here is growing at half the rate and so it appears wider. But what it is, is being, it's being compressed, it's being squeezed down. Let me make that clearer. Let's make the number of multiplying by 1 over 100. And you can see right here, it squeezes the graph down almost all the way to the ground because of the compression factor of 100. I'm multiplying by 1 over 100 or dividing by 100. The graph is so much closer to 1. Of course, we can combine all of these things together to make life happy. So if I have 3x squared, but now I make the 3 negative, look at that. It's the same graph, but now it's upside down. If I then want to shift it up by 4 plus 4, it's the same upside down graph, but now it's up by 4 units. One of the skills you must have is you must be able to quickly look at a graph and determine what's happening. This graph is upside down, therefore it has a minus sign. The minus sign is a reflection. This graph is right here has a center at 4, so it has been shifted up 4, so I have a plus 4 on the outside. Again, if you compare it to the original graph, you can see it's skinnier, and so it means that I'm, being, I'm multiplying by a factor to make the graph grow more. Of course, I can put in my parentheses. Um, let's go with x minus 2. And that will shift the graph over 2 units. Right here, and in comparison to the original x squared graph, we have a graph right here. Center now is 2 units over and up 4 by these two numbers right here. Uh, negative sign means the graph is upside down, and then the plus 3 means it's, it's not as wide, it's skinnier than the original graph. Last point, if I were to make this 100, make it grow very quickly, graph right here, you can clearly see how the graph is um, being squeezed. Thank you.